One of the big winners of the Carnegie Science Awards just this past spring is beginning to make a big mark in the way homeowners in our region could be using natural gas in the future. Watt Fuel Cell Corporation is teaming up with People's Gas to install hybrid fuel cells that use a chemical process to turn natural gas into electricity. Late last month, the companies installed their first fuel cell in a residence in Westmoreland County. And the patented technology and Watt's proprietary additive manufacturing process that helps make it commercially viable earned the company's uh, founder the Carnegie Science Award. And Kane Finnerty is president, CEO, and founder of Watt Fuel Cell. Ann Metzger's back with us. She's co-director of the Carnegie Science Center, which is already on the hunt for a few more innovators and educators to honor next year. And welcome. Good to have you both. Thank you. Yeah, and nice welcome back, Ann. Always Thank good to have you. Yeah, so uh, obviously Watt Fuel Cell got recognition last year. Why? What was it about what this company and what Kane is doing that, that made it merit such recognition? Well, Kane's award was innovation in energy and the um, the committee who the judging committee looked at his uh, his work and saw that he had really done additive manufacturing and had added efficiency to the energy process in a way that was tremendously innovative hmm. and, and I remember we've been talking about fuel cell technology here in the region for 20 years or more never really seems to take hold so what is it about a watt fuel cell that suddenly begins to make this realistic Wow okay um. So actually you referenced the, the last sort of 20 years in Pittsburgh, if you look at sort of fuel cells, if ever you open a fuel cell textbook, there was this small startup company called Westinghouse. Right? <laughs> and the first like 30 pages is all about solid oxide fuel cells and Westinghouse. So it kind of makes sense that we're sort of circled back to come back to like the, the home of tubular solid oxide, if you like, which is, is Pittsburgh. Um, the big difference with what fuel cell is that, um, yeah, the traditional manufacturing process was always drove cost. I see cost is up here, didn't really make sense for it to be sort of commercially viable. Uh, we looked at that from a slightly different perspective, you know, and we we're like, well, you know, the, making a working fuel cell is one thing, but making something that's, you know, commercially viable, completely different ball game. Mm. Um, so rather than focusing our technology development skills on, hey, we're just going to develop tech, we took that same sort of engineering talent and really focused it on the manufacturing side. Mm. Um, so, you know, ceramics have been manufactured the same way for like 10,000 years, right? You know, so you take something, you know, you've seen Ghost with uh, Patrick Swayze. Sure, absolutely, the, yeah. The wheel spinning and the making a bowl. It's kind of been made the same way for <laughs> a long time. And, yeah, that's great. You can make things at work. But we said, hey, the ceramics has really got to take that step into the future. Um, there was a lot of technology around additive manufacturing. We sort of blended the two together and figured out how to 3D print our ceramics to make the fuel cell. Two great strengths of southwestern Pennsylvania, right? That Westinghouse electrical engineering heritage and then now ceramics and yeah. material science and, and 3D printing. You know, I remember fuel cells from the Apollo spacecraft days when I think there was a little fuel cell on board the spacecraft that yeah. sort of powered things and then they seem to go nowhere over the next 50 years. So wh what does this really mean though? What does a fuel cell do and why is potentially this a big deal for the average homeowner who's currently paying in the electric bill to the utility to supply the power? So there you go. So not very many people are kind of familiar with what a fuel cell actually is, but uh, a, a sort of very sort of top level way of thinking about it. Think about it like a battery, right? But with a battery, you take electricity, you put electricity into the battery, and then it's stored, and then whenever you want to use it, you can pull that electricity out, right? So it's an electrochemical device. Now, a fuel cell, kind of similar, it's an electrochemical device, but rather than putting electricity into it, you put the fuel into the box. Which is natural gas which in this is natural case, gas, right? right? Yeah. It takes that natural gas as a chemical reaction, produces electricity, so then you've got usable electricity. Okay, so but what, what are the waste products and stuff? You're making electricity out of natural gas, are there byproducts at all? Yeah, you've got a little bit of CO2, a little bit of water, Okay. but the system itself is incredibly efficient. Um, you know, if you look at a combined heat and power, so we're making both, you know, your heat potentially for hot water, mm -hmm. and we're making power, so electricity. Put those two things together, you can be at 75, 80% efficient in your garage or in your basement. Okay. Right now, that's, that's a massive increase in efficiency. So much more efficient than the traditional ways of burning the gas and then right. you know, transmitting the power or whatever exactly. it takes and, uh, to run a and a, big, and a big difference with that technology versus like conventional sort of generators, we've got zero carbon monoxide. Right? There's no combustion. 
Right, so it's all sort of chemistry. You're not burning analysis, anything. It's, right, it's no chemistry burning. in this case. You've got it. Really exciting. And so then you've forged this partnership with People's Gas that's yeah. really pretty exciting. Their intent is to make this a ubiquitous uh, product that, that folks all over the all over the region will have an opportunity to take it. Well, yeah, of. sometimes sometimes fortune smiles on you, right? Yeah. And yeah, we, we landed in Pennsylvania, and uh, just so it happens that we landed in the, the backyard of People's Gas. And you've got a visionary CEO, like Morgan O'Brien. Morgan O'Brien, yeah. And you know, this guy's sort of looking at he's got a whole vision for how you know natural gas can be used to sort of you know, power up homes and you know sort of supplement the grid and all those sort of things. And to be frank, it's having the, the kahunas to really move this forward and embrace the new technology. Uh, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, we got plenty of natural gas. Now we just see markets uh, for it all, and especially markets that don't require burning it or even better. What a, what a wonderful way to use yeah, uh, incredible natural resources. So, Anne, incredible story. I doubt he's the only cane out here or the only great story. So you're looking for a few more for next year's awards, right? We are. I mean, I, he's hard to beat, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if you but can we, we have our nominations open now for the 2019 Carnegie Science Awards. Kane will be one of the judges on the uh, Energy Award this year. And we're looking for people to nominate uh, entrepreneurs, um, manufacturers, uh, students, teachers. Go to the Carnegie Science Center website and all of the information is there. The nominations are due by the end of November. End of November, always great. Incredible inspiration and creativity. And great to see it happening here in our region. Ann Metzger from the Carnegie Science Center. Kane Finnerty, Watt Fuel Cell. Best of luck. Continue Thank you. Success. Absolutely. And when we return, a heads up for theater goers in Pittsburgh's cultural district why it is time to allow time for tighter security. Stay with us.